जय हिंद एवरी वन आई मेघा गुप्ता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट एट ए के जी ई सी गाजियाबाद सो टूडे आई विल स्टार्ट लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन डिस्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर एंड थियोरी ऑफ लॉजिक एंड टूडे इज टॉपिक इज सेट थियोरी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी जस्ट डिस्कस अबाउट वी जस्ट डिस्कस अबाउट वट आर द टॉपिक्स वी कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर सो वी कवर्ड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सेट थियोरी देन we move forward towards types of sets and then we move forward towards combination of sets and at last we discussing about multi sets so come to first thing that is what is discrete and continuous mathematics so so this is the basic thing and in basically in continuous mathematics we just carry objects that vary continuously let us consider an example of analog wrist watch so in analog wrist watch as we all know that we have our hand minute hand and second hand we have all three hands of watch and the analog wrist watch so in that watch if i want to calculate the time in between 125 to 126 then we have second hand in my watch so we we have many infinite possible uh, timings uh, in between 125 to 126 like 125 uh, with 0 01 means uh, 01 seconds 02 seconds up to 60 seconds so this type of mathematics is known as continuous mathematics or we can represent it is like is like if we uh, if we form a graph if we form a uh, if we form a graph of continuous mathematics so so it will be like this the things which uh, vary continuously means e for each and every point it varies a value right so come to the discrete mathematics part so in discrete mathematics the object basically vary with discrete values only let uh, let us uh, take an example of uh, discrete watches discrete watches uh, basically in digital wrist watches in digital wrist, uh, wrist watches if you if i want to calculate the timing in between 125 to 127 then then i don't have the timings in between 125 to 127 like 125.03 seconds we doesn't take that time in digital wrist watches we directly move forward to 125 to 127 these type of mathematics with these type of examples are come under discrete mathematics so if if i form a graph for the discrete mathematics so here if i have a value yeah at at 1 i have a value of 5 at 2 i have a value at of 10 but in between 1 and 2 there is no value given in the graph so this type of mathematics is known as discrete mathematics now come to the next thing that is the main theory of today's lecture that is set theory so in set theory let us understand what is set basically so a set is an unordered collection of different elements means a set basically a set is a collection of elements which is different in nature uh we will move forward towards example so first of all we uh, discussing about the definition of sets so set is an unordered pair unordered collection of different elements and it can be represented it can be representing with the capital letters of english alphabets like for example i take a set of numbers so here i use a a is the capital alphabet so capital alphabet is used to for representing a set and we will uh, we will also use the curly cur, uh, curly braces for representing a set and in this curly braces we just put put the uh, put it down the different elements collections so this is the representation of any set like for example i take a example up uh, numbers up to 10 so this is a set which includes the numbers up to 10 and represented by a capital letter that is a and this is the representation of set in the mathematics in the set theory and there is no repetition allow in the set for example if i take another set that is b and it consists a a b so there is no mean to write a two times in the set 
इट जस्ट कंसिडर एज ए कॉमा बी तो दिस इज द मेन पॉइंट इन दी सेट थ्योरी दैट अ सेट If the order of the elements is changed, or any element of a set is repeated, it doesn't make any changes in the set. So let us consider some examples of set here. Some examples of set here. First example is a set of all positive integers. Uh, as we all know that positive integers means one to infinity. So a numbers can uh, a set which includes one to infinity numbers is considered to be as set or a set of planets in the solar system this is also a set or a set of all states of india this is also a set or we can say that the set of all the students in the class in a particular class that is also a set so i think you understand that what is set basically so carry move forward towards set theory so uh, we as i all I'll, I'll, I'll as i discussed uh, in previous slide that how we represent a set in a basic mode so in math, in set theory basically a set is represented by the two ways was uh, the first one is your roster form or we can say that it is a tabular form and second method is of representation is set builder form as we write here the roster form or tabular form and the set builder notation there are two notations which are used for set representations now come to the next part which includes the roster or tabular form roster or tabular form means uh, set is represented by the curly braces with the capital letter denotion and with its elements like a set is representing by listing all the elements by listing all the elements comprising it so this is the representation which is roster or which is tabular in nature the elements are enclosed with the brackets and separated by commas like for example here we can take an example like set of vowels in english alphabet set of vowels in english alphabet means a e i o u as we all know that so it can be represented only using a, a letter that is a a can be a set which includes set of all the vowels in english alphabet so a e i o u these are all the elements which are listed down here so this is the roster form this is the tabular form and let us take an another example that is the set of odd numbers less than 10 means the elements odd numbers odd numbers means which are not divisible by 2 so here we take natural numbers odd natural numbers which are less than 10 so we can take 1 3 5 7 and 9 and it is represented by a set b with the curly braces here so this type of representation basically is tabular form or is roster form so second thing is second representation is set builder form so now come to the set builder form set builder form basically a defined property in which the elements of the set have have in common means the set is defined by specifying a property that elements uh, that the elements of the set have in common or it can be uh, sorry described by like a is the set and we use braces also and here we use the representation where all the elements all the elements of the set have in common property so this is the type of representation let us understand it with the uh, by taking an example like uh, the set of vowels in english the set of vowels in english is a e i o u as we all know that but but the common thing is in in a e i o u the common thing is these all are english alphabets so we take the common thing in set builder notation that is the vowels of english alphabet and we can write as an uh, we can write it as an english language statement right that is a is the set which includes x matlab x is a variable which varies from a e i o u which is uh, which basically uh, value of x is a e i o u so x is a vowel in english alphabet so this type of representation is a set builder notation right let us take another example that is 13579 and 13579 as as we all know that this these 13579 are the odd natural number less than 10 so we can write it at 
b equal to common thing is odd natural number less than 10 x is such that x is an odd natural number less than 10 we can write it as this or we can write it that this like x in between 1 to 10 from 1 to 10 and x divide by 2 gives remainder not equal to 0. This is also right as this. This is also common in all the elements given in the set. So, we can represent this set as in this as in this. So, set builder notations of each and every set will be different according to the person's view. Right? So, this is the set builder notation. This is the second representation of sets. So, this is all about representation of sets. Now, if an element is a member of any set, if an element is a member of any set, so we can represent that as that is belongs to sign, belongs to, this is belongs to, belongs to. So, it is denoted by x belongs to S, S here is a set and X is an element. X is an element which is belongs to S, which is present in the set S. So, we can write as that X belongs to S. This sign is for belongs to. And if an element Y is not a member of S, if for example Y is an element which is not present in S, then we can just cut it down. That means not belongs to. So, this sign is for not belongs to. These are, these are some basics which you have to know that. For example, here uh, S is a set which includes these elements and here we can say that 1, 1 is belongs to S, 1.2 is also belongs to S, 2 is also belongs to S or if I take 4, 4 is not belongs to S or if I take 1.5, this is not or belongs to S. So, this is the theory about the belongs to sign. If an element is present in the set, we can say that it is belongs to this set or if it is not present in the set, we can say that it is not present in the set or it is not belongs to that set. Now, come to the some standard uh, symbols which are basically used by us uh, for denoting the sets, right. For example, if I take the natural number example, if I take the positive natural number set, then it can be represented as capital N or capital N should be in the bold manner, bold. So, we, we all know that this is a fixed sign. If I write only N that, so there is in between in both. This is a nat uh, normal representation of any set, but this is a set of natural number, right? So, come to the second representation that is Z. Z. Z is used for the set of integers whereas Z plus is used for set of all positive integers. Positive integers means which does not take negative values and just Z star. Z star means non-zero integers. Non-zero means set of integers which does not include zero, right? And E, E is for even numbers, Q is for rational numbers. Q star means non-zero rational numbers, Q plus means positive rational numbers, R means real numbers and R star means non-real, R plus means positive real and C means complex which includes iota and C star means non-zero complex numbers. Here if you see that, if I use with any set, sorry natural number we does not take it, Z, if I use positive sign here that means positive number set, right? If I use star here, that means non-zero, right? For any set, if I use star, that means non-zero. If I use plus, if I use the addition sign, that means the positive number set. Either it is real numbers or it is integers or it is even numbers or it is complex numbers. If, uh, if, if I take the addition sign with the set sign that means it is the positive number sets and if I take star sign that means it is the it is the non-zero 
right now come to the next thing that is cardinality of set cardinality of set basically is the number of elements present in any set this is the easy thing that means the how many numbers how many number of elements are present in this set that is the cardinality of the set and it is represented simply by the sign this the name of the set with the modulo sign this represent the cardinality of any set and the number is also referred as cardinal number right if a set has infinite number of elements if a set has infinite number of elements then its cardinality is also infinite then its ca cardinality is also infinite right for example if i take this set 1 4 3 5 there are four elements present in the set then the cardinality of this set is 4 but in this set there is no ending point of this set so the cardinality of this set is infinity as we doesn't know how and what is the end point of this set so this is all about the cardinality of set cardinality is number of elements present in the set basically now these are some uh, properties of cardinality of set if there are two sets present with the us uh, for example, x and y, if I take the uh, x and y as in set, then first point is if the cardinality of x is equal to cardinality of y, then we can say that the two sets, the number of elements in the set x is equal to number of elements in the set y. In this case, in this case, there is always exist a bijective function from x to y and the bijective function as we all know that that is 1 1 and on 2 bijective function means a function which is 1 1 and on 2 right okay now come to the second point that is cardinality of x is less than equal to cardinality of y for example if i take example uh, x as in set of 1 2 3 x is in set of 1 2 3 and y as in y as in set of 1 2 5 then in this case the cardinality of x is less than equal to y basically the case of less than but equal to y can uh, so we can write it as like this 4 5 1 2 5 sets of x and also of y then this case x cardinality of x is less than equal to y in this case there is always an injective function from x to y. Injective means 1, 1. Injective means 1, 1. Now, come to the next point. That is, when the cardinality of x is less, less than cardinality of y, then, then we can say that the number of elements present in x is less than number of elements in y. So, there exists a function that is injective only not a bijective function so this is the condition in this case now come to the fourth point if i have this condition this condition and then is this condition then x and y are commonly referred as equivalent sets so if the cardinality of x is less than equal to cardinality of y and cardinality of x is greater than equal to cardinality of y then cardinality of x is equal to cardinality of y so in this case the sets should be equivalent sets now come to the next thing that is types of set so in types of sets we have many types of sets present so first is your finite set so set which contain a definite number of elements basically a uh, set in which the number of elements should be definite that type of set is finite set and finite set example is simple set uh, which includes the english alphabets or oh, sorry english vowels right english vowels includes a e i o u that is finite in nature we have only five elements always there in the set so this type of set is finite set or here we use the example of this x should be greater than 50 and less than 70 means 51 to 69 we have in the set s so this is the finite set because we have always 
definite number of elements in the set. And now come to the infinite set. Infinite set means we have infinite number of elements present in the set. Means uh, if I take the natural number set, natural number set. So natural number is from one to infinity, up to infinity. So we doesn't know how the set is and. So that type of set is known as infinite set or we can take an example here that x belongs to this is belongs to x belongs to natural numbers and x is greater than 10. x is greater than 10 means start from the 11 and up to infinity because it doesn't have any ending point of x on x belongs to natural number. So the set is from 11 to infinity right. So, this is the set S which is infinite in nature. Now, come to the third set that's, that, uh, that is subset. So, basically a subset is represented by, uh, in subset we have two sets, right, x and y. And it is represented that x is the subset of y. This is the sign of subset, okay. And the subset means if every element of x is present in the if every element of x is present in the set y, then we can say that it is a subset of y. For example, here, if I take a, a set from 1 to 6, that is x and y is 1, 2. So, we can say that y is the subset of x because the 1 and 2 is present in the x, right? So, we can here say that y is the subset of x because each element of y is present in x, right. Now come to the next thing that is example number 2. If x is this and y is this, here y and x both are equal in nature, right. If y and uh, x are both are equal in nature, then also y is the subset of x or x is the subset of y, right. So, this is the concept of subset right now now come to the proper subset proper subset is sometimes different from subset like proper subset is the subset but not equal to means if i have a set x which contain 1 to 6 well and a set y which contain only 1 2 so y is the proper subset of x we can say that y is the proper subset of x we can say that right y is the proper subset of x but why but why because every element of x is an element of y means every element of y is an every element uh, is an element of x so what is the difference in between subset and proper subset? So, the main difference is if, if the x, if the x has at least one element greater than the y, then y, sorry, then y is the proper subset of x. If the elements are equal, then we does not say that, we does not say that y is the proper subset of x. In case of this, 1, 2, 3. Let us take an example. 1, 2, 3. In this case, x is the subset of y, but x is not the proper subset of y because the number of elements in x and y are same. And in proper subset, there is no sign of equal here. If you see that, there is no sign of equal here. We just have this property. This is the proper subset. Now come to the part universal set. Universal set basically a set or is the collection of elements in a particular context or application where we can uh, say that for example, if I take uh, if I take an example of cars, right? Uh, so we can take uh, we can take universal set as in uh, the set of all cars, right? So universal set means a particular context means uh, cars, cars is a particular context and all the cars are present in a set that is known as universal set because the cars of Hyundai, the cars of Maruti, the cars of Kia, the cars of um, Mahindra 
uh, all the companies cars are come under the universal set that is cars but if i take a subset like uh, if i uh, filter out the sets of uh, the cars of maruti from the universal set then this this will become the this will become the subset of that universal set Th means subset is cars of maruti or we can use the same example the set of animals on earth the set of animals on earth so, subset like mammals fishes and uh, many more right this is the universal set now sixth is empty set or null set empty set or null set means empty set is a set which contain no elements as its name suggests null set nothing but it is denoted by the sign of fire it is represented as this or with the null bra braces also so this is a representation of null set uh, let us take an example that uh, number which is a natural number which is uh, greater than 8 and less than 9 is it possible to write a natural number in between 8 and 9 no so this is a null set right now come to the next set that is unit set or singleton set singleton set basically a set containing only one element as its name suggests single single means only one element for example i take uh, x is a set which is which contains the value from 7 to 9 7 to 9 only includes 8 as we take the natural number here so the single elements so this set is known as unit set right now come to next set uh, that is equal set and next to next that is equivalent set there is a bit uh, there is a difference in between equal and equivalent sets so equal sets means a set containing same elements they are said to be equal in nature but in equivalent sets the cardinality of two sets should be same for example here if i take an example of uh, set a 1 to 6 and here b 6 1 2 and the elements the order of element the place of element doesn't matter in the set so elements are 1 2 6 only a and b in both in both sets we have only three elements that is 1 2 and 6 so the both sets are equal in nature as they are uh, they as they contains 1 2 and 6 element only but in case of equivalent set we as we all know that cardinalities of two sets should be equal means the element doesn't matter here only cardinality of two both the sets should be equal like if i take a set a 1 to 6 if i take a set 16 17 22 the they both are not equal but they are equivalent as the cardinality of a is also 3 and cardinality of b is also 3 the cardinality of both the sets are equal, uh, equal that is 3 but the elements are not equal so we can say that they are equivalent but not equal this is the main difference in between equal and equivalent sets okay come to the next that is overlapping sets overlapping sets means uh, a sets which contain only one at least actually at least one element common for example if i take an example of a that is 1 2 3 and b that is 2 4 6 8 here 2 4 6 only so here if you see that a and b a and b have have two as common element right so these set are overlapping sets right yeah here is an example 1 to 6 6 to 12 14 so 6 is a common element in both the sets so these sets are known as overlapping sets and there are four identities given in the presentation uh, first one is n represent number of elements n represent number of elements so number of elements in a union b this is known as union this sign is known as union right and this sign is known as intersection we will discuss uh, these terms later right a union b in, uh, is equal to number of elements in a plus number of elements in b minus number of elements in a intersection b this is the formula and next is if i write it as this the so number of elements in a minus b b minus a plus 
A intersection B or we can say that number of elements in A is equal to number of elements in A minus B plus intersection B same as B minus A intersection minus is subtraction right we will discuss these terms later now come to the next type that is disjoint disjoint means there is no common element present in the two sets for example here 1 2 6 and 7 9 14 there is no common element in both the sets so these sets are known as disjoint sets or we can say that their intersection is null we will discuss intersection later now come to the last type of set that is power set power set basically uh, is denoted by p of s p of s means power set of s if a set is given that is s then the power set is represented by p of s if a set is given that is a then the power set is represented by p of a right and power set is the set which contains all the subsets of any set right all the subsets of any set right so let us assume that if i have a uh, if i have a set that is equal to 1 right that is equal to 1 so the uh, possible subsets the possible subsets will be either uh, 1 or phi null right so these both are possible subsets then the power sets of let us say this is b power set of b is phi and 1 this is the power set which contain all the subsets of any set right uh, uh, one thing is also important that uh, how many power how many subsets are possible from any set right uh, if cardinality of any set is equal to n this is the cardinality right then 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 number of subsets number of subsets equal to 2 raise the power n this is the formula this is the concept basically 2 raise the power n right so we use it here like assume the set containing 1 and 2 so there are two elements so 2 raise the power 2 that means the power set are 4 and how we write that we just always include null set we just always include set itself and the element one by one that is these are all four subsets and they all are come under a set when they all come under a set that set is known as power set similarly in case of three elements the cardinality is three to raise the power three means eight subsets are possible eight subsets possible means phi and the set itself and we just take one by one one two three 1 2 1 3 2 3 these all are possible subsets and the all the possible subsets are come under a set that for uh, that form a power subset right okay the next topic is combination of sets so, uh, before uh, discussing about combination of sets we just uh, have an idea of venn diagrams so Venn diagrams means uh, diagram which is a pictorial basically representation of any set okay so it is uh, it is thought by uh, John Venn in 1880 and it is represented by using the overlapping circles so we'll discuss it like this these are the set operations jo hum log previous abhi slides mein dekh rahe the that is the set operations in previous uh, slides we have union intersection complement and so on so first operation is union operations union operation basically uh, represented by venn diagram venn diagram is this this is a venn diagram right this is a venn diagram and venn diagram is represented by overlapping circles as i earlier said this is a set A and this is a set B. Overlapping means this area represent the common area. This area is representing common area, right? Right? Overlapping sets as we discussed in types of sets, right? In union, basically we have given, if for example, if we have 
two sets A and B, then the union of A and B is represented by basically this sign. This sign. So this is represented. Uh, this union of any two sets is represented by A union B, uh, and A union B is the set that contains. that contains those elements that are either in a or b so this is the union operation and the example is given in the ppt let us discuss later uh, thank you so much thank you